What's going on, everybody? Back again here for Rolling Out Star Studio. Your host, Malik Brown, of course. Here at Star Studio, we talk to amazing people doing amazing things in the entertainment industry. Directors, producers, actors, actresses, everybody. And today, uh, I'm with I'm with I'm with some good people. Today, I'm with Rick Mathis, of course, and, and Dr. Chika Akua. Guys, how y'all doing today? I'm blessed, bro. Doing well. Today. Great, great, great. So, of course, you know we are all here to talk about B1, uh, the movie curriculum. Um, of course, uh, Rick. He uh, produced and directed this this film, and he turned it into a curriculum, turned it into a book. Uh, just just first of all, um, I know we, we already we talked earlier, but uh, just for the people, I guess you know, let the people know, you know, what what is this uh this whole movie and curriculum about? Exactly. So, um, B one the movie is a movie that's paired with a curriculum where it has exercises journal exercises that reflect the film. So we've uh, produced this film in five episodes and each one of those episodes have exercises that correlate with the film. So everything from uh, touching on the music that we're listening to, uh, relationships, health, uh, being on code in all these areas is what we touch on in the film as, as well as the curriculum. And definitely let the people know uh... How Dr. Cool, you know, how he was able to be involved as well. It, exactly. So Dr. Chika Akua is one of the uh one of the cast members that's in the film that's really highlighted in B1, the movie. And uh man, he said some amazing things. Um, he'll share with you as well. You know, he has a history or education background. So he writes curriculums uh himself. So uh, has there been, that was a question we were asking, has there been a film and a curriculum, do you know, Dr. Chika Akua, that has been promoted as such? Uh, the only one that I know of would be probably Hidden Colors. They came out with a curriculum okay. afterwards. Yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So that's good. So um, so yeah, so that that's what we're doing. So we wanted to give you an experience. So we're doing what's called edutainment you know, where we give you the experience of watching a film that gives you some information that you can chew on and then use in your daily lives, but also give you exercises that you can walk through uh, with your family, which we'll talk about today in this in this interview, I'm sure. Definitely. So Dr. Cool, definitely. I mean, when you first heard about B1, the movie curriculum, uh, well, what were your thoughts and in, in, in how this can impact uh, the community, the world? Sure. Well, I was I was very excited. I'm always excited. Anytime uh, Brother Rick has a project going on, I try to drop what I'm doing because I know it's going to it's going to be amazing and it's going to be deeply impactful. So when he told me the premise behind B1 about us putting ourselves first and that that's what all free, proud and productive people do and also about being on code. I said, man, that's that's not only a message that we need to hear as an, as adults. Our young people need to hear that message as well. So I was really excited when he talked about developing this curriculum because the activities go uh, right in line with the themes of the movie. And it provides young people an opportunity to engage in critical cultural analysis about media, the media that they're consuming. And it gets them to think critically, analytically, and reflectively about what this content is doing to them as individuals, but also to us as a people. So I'm really excited about this project. You know, one of the biggest things uh, on this project is, is talking about uh, the importance in, of on, on, on code. Um, of course, Rick, I know he has the definition of, but uh, Do Dr. Akul, when you hear on code, um, what, what does that mean to you? To me, it, it represents the foundation of our culture, that there are certain things that we do as a people, and there are certain things that we don't do. And when it's certain things that clearly we just don't do, that means you're off code, right? So being on code means loving our people, supporting our people, working collectively and cooperatively and collaboratively. It means lifting us up and not bringing us down. Those are just a few of the things uh, that it means to be on code to me. It means supporting black businesses, uplifting your race, putting us first, not to the exclusion of other people, uh, but really operating in a way that's in our own best interest. 
And in fact, we've been trained to do the exact opposite. And so it takes a brilliant filmmaker like a brother, Rick Mathis, to kind of step aside and say, wait a minute, everybody, we need to get back on code. We need to get, we need to recenter ourselves in the best of our culture. Because right now, so many of our young people have only been exposed to the worst of our culture. And then they begin to associate blackness with violence, ignorance, and criminality, rather than associating blackness with excellence and achievement and respect. So one of the things I really appreciate about this film is it helps us to recenter ourselves in the best of our culture. Rick, uh, I know, please let us know the, the definition that you have, but also I've never asked you, where were you when you thought of the term on code? Man, that's a good question. Um, so to kind of backtrack, so I don't remember exactly where I was, but I remember where I was when I got the call from Boyce Watkins, Dr. Boyce Watkins, uh, whom I partnered uh, with to to produce this film. Uh, I was at you know one of my uh, properties, which I've now sold, and uh, sitting in the living room, and I was actually getting ready to sell that property. And uh, I get this call from, you know, Dr. Boyce Watkins. And he was like, well, I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. I got this idea. I want to produce this uh, documentary uh, for B1, for B1, the B1 movement. Well, if you know uh, and you follow Dr. Boyce Watkins, um, you know, he's been uh, a, a cheerleader, if you will, for the B1 movement uh, for some time now. So for him to reach out and say, hey, I want you to produce the B1 documentary, I was like, wow, okay, that's, you know, that's some big shoes to fill. But, you know, I think I'm the man that can get the job done. So I was actually there. And uh, from there, um, I kind of came up with the idea of being on code. Because when you look at what it means to put Black first, um, that's what it means. It means to be on code. So I go jogging uh, around Stone Mountain a lot. And a lot of times I get a lot of downloads because if you are familiar with Stone Mountain, Stone Mountain is the largest granite rock in the world, largest exposed granite rock in the world. So if you understand what granite is, granite is nothing but a crystal, which it used to be called Crystal Mountain prior to it being changed to Stone Mountain. So when I go there and I'm jogging, I receive a lot of downloads because my mind is free. Um, you know, I could just think and it's like I have this freedom. So I do five miles around the mountain. The mountain is actually about 4.7. So I do about five miles uh, when I run around the mountain. But I, if I had to say where I was when being on code that, that, that I received that download, I would say I was at Stone Mountain. I, I did not know uh, about the crystal. I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something new every day. Oh, oh, Mountain is a powerful place. It was a reason the KKKs used to hold their rallies and do a lot of their things, their rituals, if you will, on top of the mountain. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dr. Cool, uh, I know early, at the end of your, your last uh, statement, you talked about blackness and, and how, you know, people want to use it negatively, but they don't want to use it positively as much. Uh, of course, you know, going on right now, we talk about music. Um, you, you talk about, uh, you know, how music has impacted us, but also how it's right now negatively impacting us, especially when you think about uh, Young Thug, of course, and the people using uh, the lyrics against his lyrics against him. Um, when, when you talk about music and and how it's affecting us and, and how it's being impacted uh, in this world, what, what, what are your thoughts? Man, there's a powerful scene in the film, and I don't want to give it away, but Dr. George, George Frazier says, when our music changed, we changed. You think about that. There were many songs in the 60s that were a part of the movement. Say it loud. I'm Black and I'm Proud, you know, by James Brown, mm -hmm. Marvin Gaye asking, you know, what's going on and different things like that. Uh, I kind of came into consciousness and came of age in the 90s. And at that time, to me, that was in the early 90s was the golden age of hip hop, where we had Public Enemy, we had Arrested Development, we had KRS-One and Boogie Down Productions, Brand Nubian, Poor Righteous Teachers. And these brothers and, and many others and sisters were putting out some really powerful messages that really educated me about what it meant to be culturally conscious and 
committed to the community and issues of social justice and freedom and liberation. And then we saw the 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 takeover of hip hop, you know? And so this is why it's so important that if you haven't lived through that, you would think that a lot of the types of things that we're seeing today, well, that's just part of it. And it's been normalized. It's not normal, but it's been normalized. The gangsterization, the criminalization, the hypersexualization that's represented um, in the music and by many of the artists, again, is not normal, but it's been normalized. And it's also been subsidized or financed by those that are attempting to destroy us and have us destroy ourselves. And so yet another reason why this B1 film is so very, very powerful. And I'm thankful to Dr. Boyce Watkins and Brother Rick Mathis for, for putting their expertise into this project. For you, for you, Rick, um, just when, when talking about the curriculum and, and you know the different activities and things that that people should expect. What should they expect from the curriculum, um, the activities, and and the different things that they can uh they can really get in tune with uh when when we read the curriculum. Yeah, well, one of the things, man, just to highlight my brother, Dr. Chika Akua, uh, we've added um, what is it called? The Chika Akua theory is what uh, it's called. The Akua Media Rating Scale. The the Akua the Akua Media Rating Scale. Uh, so. In that, you know, he, I let him share with you all uh, what it is, but it it addresses the same as you know I was speaking about earlier uh, with the music. It addresses the same thing in films, in the imagery that we project. You know, it's important that uh, we project positive images and images that show us in the positive way, and we'll project a positive image around the world. Uh, in the film, uh, there's a young lady uh, by the name of uh, Mary Dean, attorney Mary Dean. Uh, she says uh, that she was talking to an Asian guy and he didn't know that Black people were as beautiful as they are until he saw uh, the movie Black, Black Panther, where you had the bald women and you can just see their natural beauty, you know, penetrating through the film. So a lot of times, you know, people want... They won't travel to America. If you're in Asia, if you're in India, if you're in certain parts of South Africa or West Africa, you may not get the opportunity to travel to America to visually see the beauty of the women, the beauty of the people. So what you have to rely on are the images that are depicted in the in the movies and things like that. And what we see on the reality shows and things like that and documentaries. So uh, it's important that we show ourselves in the best light so that that image, you know, can circulate throughout the planet, throughout the world, and show us in the best light. And Dr. Akua, uh, I guess you can definitely let us know. Uh, I, I, I don't forgot, is it the Akua Media? What was it again? <laughs> the Akua Media Rating Scale. Right. So, yeah, so definitely let the people know what that what that rating scale is and what that looks like. Sure. Well, as an educator, I learned very early on um, telling students what to believe is not part of what education is about. And not only that, it's not effective either. You have to present information in such a way that people can draw their own conclusions. And so I could see the effect and the impact that media was having on my students' behavior and on their thinking, but they weren't seeing it in themselves. And so way back in the 90s, I developed the Akua Media Rating Scale as a way for them to critically analyze the media that they were consuming. So they could choose their own program, their own video, or their own movie. And the, the scale has 10 questions on it. And you're supposed to rate that video program, TV program, or movie on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest. So for example, some of the questions are like this, what is the image of black manhood in this movie or program? What is the image of black womanhood? Again, one to 10, 10 being the highest. What is the image of black family life? Is there unnecessary profanity? Um, does the main character undergo a transformation such that I don't expect all stories and movies to be overwhelmingly positive, but if it starts off negative, does the main character undergo a transformation and an awakening of consciousness that changes their behavior and their circumstances? 
So those are just a few of the questions, but they're 10 altogether. Interesting, a very interesting thing happened when I would do this with my middle school students. They would oftentimes rate a movie accurately, but the last question would be, would you recommend this movie to other people? And they would say yes. And I say, wait a minute. <laughs> you gave this movie a 29 out of 100. You said it had a, 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 a one for black manhood and a two for black womanhood and a zero for black family. How, you gave it a 29 out of 100, but you say you recommend. Oh, come on, Mr. Cool. That's, that's just entertainment. So it took a while for them to start thinking critically, analytically, and reflectively about what they were viewing and the impact that it was having on them and their peers. So years later, when I wrote, I think when I wrote the book Parent Power, I added the Akua music rating scale. Same questions, same items. What is the image of black manhood? What is the image of black womanhood? What is the image of black family life? But until we engage our children like this, uh, then they will continue to consume unconsciously. But even when they become conscious, and this is why those uh, that are putting out this information have studied us and our culture very thoroughly, even when they rate a movie, a program, or a piece of music accurately, there are certain triggers in the music, like we know that we, we know what the deep bass does to us, right? Even when the lyrics are terrible and self-destructive, when that bass drops, you know, we get to move him. And so it's incumbent upon our artists and us as consumers to do a much better job of demanding more from those that we support. And that's why I'm so proud of, of Brother D1, the rapper who's now holding other hip hop artists accountable um, in ways that are making them very, very uncomfortable. And so we see what D1 is doing and then the movie B1, it further lets me know that it's time that we as a people deal with this. This is the 50th anniversary of hip hop. And now people are really reflecting on the impact that it's had on our community and on our culture. So it's definitely time that we have this, this, this talk that we're having. Should have did this. Mm -hmm. one is one of the main characters in B1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. he's talking about the same thing. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I forgot to even shout D1 out because he was just literally uh, on our platform. Uh, Rashad interviewed him uh, like maybe last week or two weeks ago, and he gave him the rap MVP of the year. And I was mm. like, we were like, like you all are saying, like what he's what he's been talking about. Of course, um, I mean, it's impactful. It's impactful, and he deserves his flower. So shout out to D1 for sure. Um, definitely want to ask you all just, and you you kind of talked about it already, Doctor Cool, but the the impact that something like this can have on the younger generation. Oh, what, let, let, we can go into that. Yeah, the impact that it can have is it will raise the level of consciousness and awareness, and it will help us to demand more from our artists, from our record labels, from movie studios and things of that nature. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, about a point in it where Rick demonstrates there was an Asian man who had a tremendous amount of respect for African culture after having viewed um, the movie Black Panther. That movie was very instructive from the standpoint of it helped us to see ourselves on the screen in ways we had never seen ourselves before. If you think about it, for the first time in history, we saw Black people going out and buying African outfits just to go to the movie and to take pictures and post on social media. We became that proud. We have never seen black people do that before. We saw people in the 90s when the movie X came out by Spike Lee. We went out and bought the X caps. We bought the African medallions and different things like that. But we've never seen black people that proud to be African. Even if they only bought the that outfit for the first time and only wore it on that occasion. But that's an example of how powerful media can be. But we've been saturated by so much self-destructive media that oftentimes we can't discern the difference between what's helpful and what's destructive. And that's why not only the film B1, 
but the workbook and curriculum that goes along with it is so essential. I want to appeal to all principals, all teachers, those that lead community centers, youth groups, youth ministries and churches and other faith-based organizations to show this movie and to purchase uh, the workbook and activity guide that goes with it, the whole curriculum, and do it with our young people in these different spaces. Because if we don't do it, who will? And if not now, then when? It's really up to us. Great, you got it. <laughs> okay, now what's that question again? You you took me on a journey there, Dr. Cool. No, so just, <laughs> just the impact that this this movie in the curriculum uh has on the young generation. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So in the film, uh Dr. Neely Fuller, if you're not familiar with who he is, look him up. He has this thing called show offisms that um one of the uh, cast members, Jay, that she referenced him in the film. And he basically says, black people need to stop showing off because at the end of the day, it's show offisms. And who are we showing off for? We're showing off for each other to impress each other, which at the end of the day, like my grandma used to say, don't mount to a hill of beans, meaning it don't mean nothing. <laughs> so, you know, so imagine that though, if, you know, we just had a moratorium and we say, you know, for the month of January in 2024, there will be no show offisms on social media. We will are not showing off everything that we are posting and talking about and projecting is to uplift and to show the black race in a very positive light where it's not showing off. It's just showing who we are as a race, as a group of people, and how, you know, how powerful we are and what we've, you know, been able to accomplish and 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 do, uh, you know, since we've been here on the planet, <laughs> you know, it's for the last 400 years, the inventions and the things that we've invented that our ancestors, that, they're still, that they invented that we're still using now today. So imagine if we could do that for a month where there's no show office. Mm. Everybody tucking their gold chains and they... <laughs> watches and all of that, you know, no name brand. You know what I'm saying? Which is it's just celebrating us as a group, as a race. Can I add something to that, Brother Malik? Go ahead. You know, there are some uh psychologists and researchers who have determined that there are six human needs. And the one that I want to call attention to that I think is very particular to black people, because these weren't black psychologists who came up with this. But of those human needs, the one that I think is most indicative of us as a people is the need for significance. And, and that's one of the reasons why I feel like I got to be seen. That's why we have all these show out show offisms that Rick is talking about that that Neely Fuller talks about. And Neely Fuller, for those that don't know, was very instrumental in awakening a certain level of consciousness in Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, who was an amazing psychiatrist who wrote the ISIS papers. But one of the things that Neely Fuller said is that we're living in a time of sophisticated mass confusion, sophisticated mm. mass confusion. And I would add to that, that there are many weapons of mass deception and weapons of mass distraction that decenter us and take us away from who we are and the best of our culture. But B1, as the movie, recenters us in the best of who we are and shows us who we're capable of being. Mm. Love that so much. Well, look, thank y'all so much uh, for coming on. I, I greatly appreciate it. Of course, be one of the movie curriculum. Uh, Rick, let the people know where they can find the movie, where they can find the curriculum. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, so um, so real quick, uh, some of the people that are featured in this film, we have Dr. Boyce Watkins, uh, Dr. George Frazier, Dr. Claude Anderson, Reza Islam, uh, Queen of Four, uh, hip hop artist Dean One, who we were just talking about, Ash Cash, who uh, we just did the interview at the studio with, Vicky Diller, Nuri Muhammad, Speech from Arrested Development, so on and so on. We have an all star lineup. Dr. Chica Akul, we have an all star lineup that's in this film. And when I tell you there isn't a dull moment in this film, and we really uh, touch on some key areas as it relates to Black people, everything from health to relationships, business, and personal. 
uh, to educating our, our, our children first, to having self-worth, to the music, to the films. We touch on all of these things in a very practical way, and we offer some practical solutions which are highlighted in B1, the curriculum. So on December the 28th, we are presenting uh, the B1 Kwanzaa Experience, which is, uh, let me pull it up real quick. The B1 Kwanzaa Experience is an experience uh, that uh, the Gwen Lewis Foundation, the West End Filmmakers and Legacy Management Group have curated and produced to uh, give you a festive experience with special guests, Ash Cash, Dr. Chica Akua, Blue Pill, and other B1 cast members. We will be honoring a West End uh, legend, Brother Kenneth Zaki, with the Freedom Fighters Award, which is an award that uh, the Gwen Lewis Foundation presents. And all of this is taking place on December the 28th, where we're celebrating the Kwanzaa principle number three, Ujima, which is collective unity and responsibility. And within this, we will have also the Black Business Roll Call, which is an opportunity for Black-owned black -owned businesses to highlight their business. And this will be produced, it'll be curated in a way where we can uh, share it on social media as Black-owned businesses that we need to be informed about and that we need to support going into 2024. Well, if y'all heard it here first, great. Thank you so much. Make sure y'all check out the, it's the Kwanzaa Experience, right? The, the yeah, B the B1 Kwanzaa Experience. For more information, go to B1TheMovie.com. Go to uh, B1TheMovie on Instagram, on social media, Facebook, all of those platforms. Everything is B1TheMovie. Great. Well, y'all heard it here first. Rick Mathis, Dr. Chica Akua, thank you both for coming on. We appreciate your time and uh, y'all have a great day. Can you, uh, Chica, can you leave your um, Instagram or how people can find out more about you? Sure. You can uh, check me out uh, at Chica Akua. That's C-H-I-K-E-A-K-U-A. -E and also you can check out some of the different materials that we have for children and adults at readingrevolution.org. Again, that's readingrevolution.org. Thank you. Thanks, Malik, and Rolling Out, Monster Steve, the entire Rolling Out family. Thanks for supporting B1 The Movement. Sure. Thank y'all. Thank y'all.